completing the Vendée Globe has always been a major achievement. Winning it, quite exceptional. But this time around, the stories of the first five boats to cross the finishing line was even more interesting. Steve Angsell picks up the story. Taylor and Charlie, Harry Huesler, aboard Stark, had finally made it to the infamous Cape Horn. We still have uh, 25, 26 knots of wind and gusting up to 32 knots and speeds with the mainsail and three reefs only. They're doing it quite nice and slowly and controlled way around 12 knots. Hopefully I see at least the lighthouse light there and I, I try to contact the lighthouse keeper with the VSF to chat with him to change some words. It's uh, so extraordinary thing for the sailor to, to be able to pass Cape Horn and especially during Vendée Globe around the world race. Nice to see a Finnish ensign flying there, Harry. He and female skipper Alexia Barrier were chasing the international pack off the coast of Brazil, as early favourite Jeremy Bayou on Chiral made it to the equator, but he's run out of track to get near the top ten. Clarice Kramer on Bank Populaire 10 led the female skipper contingent in 12th overall. At the front, it was a nail-biting tactical battle. Redress time awarded from the Escoffia rescue playing wild cards. Some went east, others north in search of the promise of stronger winds. A gamble for sure. Apivia had the shortest distance to go, heading towards the Bay of Biscay. So uh, I will be diving at some point today and uh, finally uh, being able to use the foil and uh, get some speed, uh, you know, decent speed on port. The good news today is uh, now for the rem rem remaining time on the race, I've got more time on port side and on port tag than starboard tag, so, so that's good the news. good news. I uh, should be able to to sail, uh, you know, at a, at, at, a, at a higher pace. Now, it wasn't just the weather and seas to keep an eye and ear out for, as Boris explained. As if we were, what, didn't have enough stress, and this adds to the stress. Speaking with a with guy and whew, half an hour of checking, convincing him, get out of my way, I'm a sailboat. I have right away. Huh. After a reduced sales option from damage at the horn, one-time leader Bessavon went north through the Azores, searching for stronger conditions for his remaining sail wardrobe. Je tenais à vous rassurer, hein, je, suis, euh, je ne suis pas parti euh, ramasser des hortensias sur cette euh, jolie euh, île fleurie de, de Horta, de la sorte, qui se trouve à ma droite, pas très loin. Mais euh, je tente une option nord euh, pour aller chercher des, des fronts et des vents plus forts. Dans les cinq premières places, là, ça va se jouer à quelques heures près tout ça. Donc voilà, donc autant tenter des choses, c'est maintenant qu'il faut tenter des coups pour n'avoir euh, rien à regretter sur la ligne d'arrivée des sables. It was Charlie Tan that swept up from the southwest on his favorite port tack to arrive at the finish line after 80 days, 6 hours, 15 minutes and 47 seconds. He had nursed Apivia's damaged port foil for more than halfway around the course and purposely went south of the rum line to enable him to finish on a port tack using his undamaged starboard foil for best speed. But although line honours for his first Bondi Globe was a tremendous achievement, those redress timings for the two rivals behind him denied him the main prize as yet, with the clock ticking. <laughs> de ce Vendée Globe euh, 2020-2021. Voilà, c'était une, une sacrée course, une sacrée aventure. Il y a eu euh, plein de rebondissements. Euh, J'ai eu euh, des, des hauts, des bas, euh, eu du, pas mal de bricolage aussi. Euh, mais euh, mais c'est une super expérience. Euh... Coming in from the north was Saint-Malo sailor Louis Berton, who almost gave up in the middle of the Southern Ocean for the solo pit stop and made up the 900-mile deficit to take second at the line. Burton's arrival, some four hours after Dallin, credited him with a duration of 80 days, 10 hours, 25 minutes and 12 seconds. Burton has sailed eight transatlantics and two round the world solo, including the last Vendée Globe. Everyone praised that seventh position in the race on an old Imoka, 
one of the heaviest of the fleet. This time it was in the previous winning boat, but he too had to watch the clock. Alors, écoute, il y a une grande, grande joie, évidemment, de de retrouver les proches, de de savoir d'où on revient. Et je sais qu'il y a un truc qui m'a, il y a un truc qui m'a toujours accroché au moment où j'allais abandonner, c'est c'était de penser à mes à mes deux petits loups qui qui sont tout jeunes et qui avaient absolument pas envie que j'abandonne parce que je pense qu'ils avaient <laughs> Meanwhile, in third place, less than 90 miles from the finish in the South Bay of Biscay, disaster struck the German sailor who carried a six-hour redress through his involvement with the Escoffier rescue. Boris Herman could theoretically still win. About half an hour ago, I hit a fishing vessel, a huge fish trawler. I was sleeping and uh, something was... I woke up and uh, I was here in the cockpit looking up a huge wall with a fish trawler and uh, my starboard side sails were uh, in, in his side. My Janneke was uh, stuck on his, um, on his cranes and sinks on the side and I hear a uh, sail ripping and uh, I was bouncing a few times with the outrigger uh, into the fishing vessel and then luckily I could slip past and, and, and go. But that was a real shock moment. And then um, I investigated all the uh, first most important things, so there was no water coming in. Um, the foil is damaged, um, but not the foil case. Uh, the bowsprit is broken off. So I'm really gutted and I'm sorry for everyone who supports that that us that this happened. It's certainly uh, the worst nightmare that happened to me so far and um, what um, really intrigues me is why did it happen? I had all my alarms on and I had many ships this afternoon where the radar alarm would perfectly alert me, the AIS alarm would perfectly alert me, uh, Oscar was on as well, uh, I had everything on and I have on purpose checked on every ship if the alarm works well and so observing on the radar how the echo is and, and, and that was all working perfectly with all the past trips I crossed and yeah okay take another deep breath and try to solve this problem with the shroud and look forward to the finish it's uh, it's quite heartbreaking but we will make it Past the Azores with the Southern Ocean and Cape Horn leader Yannick Bestelon. On the front of the Atlantic Depression, speeding in towards that ticking clock, carrying a massive 10 hours and 15 minutes redress wildcard, he was unaware of Boris's words and crossed the line in the middle of the night to take third place on the water. But with his redress, enough for the overall winner's trophy by some two and a half hours. Oh, yeah, there are so many things difficult in the van der Glove. The van der Glove is. C'est dur, on doit avoir pensé à tout, tout imaginer, et on doit aller chercher des de ressources bien profondes en soi. Et ce qui est dur, ce qui est dur, c'est le, le stress avec ces bateaux qui sont violents, qui sont stressants, bruyants, euh, vivre en permanence sur le qui-vive, euh, à l'écoute du bateau, dans des conditions difficiles, l'humidité, le froid, euh, la solitude parfois aussi. Il y a plein de choses qui sont difficiles. Hein. Thomas Rion on linked out always in the top three, and another nursing foil damage crossed the line less than 90 minutes after Yannick. J'espère revenir pour revivre une vraie arrivée devant des globes et un vrai départ. Quoi. Parce que c'est euh, voilà, une situation qui est compliquée. Là, on débarque un peu de trois mois de mer et, et on sait bien qu'à terre, c'est compliqué. Et, et que ce, voilà, que ce virus il nous vole beaucoup de choses. C'est pas la fête populaire qu'on qu peut connaître avec un vent des globes. Il n'y a, a pas le public qui devrait y avoir. Et voilà, c'est dommage parce que 
Mais bon, en même temps, j'espère qu'on a, euh, a pu donner un petit peu de petite bouffée d'air et un peu d'air euh, aux gens avec cette course. Next morning, and Boris Herman limped in with his collision damage plain for all to see. Right up to the 80th day, he was in with a good chance of victory, but cruelly snatched away by the fishing boat incident. A bittersweet arrival for the German who had endeared himself throughout the race, and always willing to give a cheery chat and virtual tour of the boat for the media. His redress moves him up to fourth ahead of Rion. Another new Vendée Globe star crossed the line, taking sixth less than an hour after Boris. Apparently, Captain Hook made a surprise stowaway appearance on board Group Apicile. This was the first of the non-falling lockers with first-timer Damien Seguin. The double Paralympic gold medalist literally is single-handed, having been born without his left hand. A true testament to his determination and skills on his first solo round the world race in second position more than once. Italian sailor Giancarlo Bedotti on Prismian Group took a well-deserved seventh place 44 minutes after Seguin, arriving just after midday, still within the leading group's 80th day at sea. The wily Jean Le Cam arrives 24 hours after Dallin. Yes, we can cross the line in atrocious weather, but nevertheless to a hero's welcome, after his brilliant display of pure seamanship and typical nonchalance in rescuing fellow competitor Kevin Escoffier off the South African coast. His redress of more than 16 hours awarded for the rescue and subsequent rendezvous with the French Navy to transfer Kevin bumps him up to fourth place overall. In this extraordinary ninth edition of the race, it was enough to make anyone dance to the rhythm.